It'll be, cameras are rolling. <clears throat> yep. It'll be nice and quiet and peaceful for everyone to get along with. Relax. That Zen moment. <laughs> everyone relax. Enjoy your day. It's going to be a beautiful day. <laughs> Mike's over there rolling his eyes at me. <laughs> better pen or something? There's one in there. If I can get it out. You want to start a new drawing? Mm. Yep, you got time to start a new drawing. <laughs> you know these people in the background? <laughs> Not a freaking clue. <laughs> and that was is a that is Isabella Worth who won the gold that year. Oh, very good. From Germany. Yeah. And that is also from my phone. Great picture. You your phone takes excellent pictures, Mike. I don't know why I'm Russian, but Yes. <laughs> and you You ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to find the thing that we're doing. And now for something special. The unit is self-contained with its own saddler, farrier, wheelwright, and so on. It's a rigorous training dished on who know all there is to know about horses, and it brings results. Yeah, we take you behind the scenes now to show just some of the interesting aspects of this training. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein, the award-winning number one podcast to create sounder horses from the ground up. Mike Stein is a registered journeyman fairy with an APF1 accreditation. On this week's show, we're still talking terminology, talking the definition of another hoof measurement, the coronary sensory process, process zone. Or sensor process zone. And sensor process zone. We're also going to talk about a case study by a horse named Bo, Bo with arthritic hook case or a hot case, and also a case study of Luke, a sus suspensory issue case. We're going to Dukes a half. <laughs> we do. The Dukes of Hazards are going to be on the show today. And over my far hand side, my very own Daisy is Mike Stein. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I should say my very own Uncle Jesse. I should say my very own Uncle Jesse, Mike Stein. How are you? Well, these days. <laughs> yeah, never know. Exactly. So what's new? What's been happening? What's been going on? What's uh, what I missed in the last six days or so since you've been here last? You've missed me, hadn't you? I have missed you. Something terrible. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I'm sorry. I left you broken hearted. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, every time you leave, I know exactly that within however many six days and, and, uh, 24 hour, 23 hours, you'll be back. Right. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I was, uh, catching up on work. You know, we're, we're still having, uh, issues because of the swamp when I was gone. And uh, I thank you very much for last week. You went out there with your little measuring, your little uh, big pry tongs and went out there and... Uh, just just kind of eased around on the mare's feet. On, just, on Dominique's just, feet and kind of pressed down on them. And you said, yeah, they're a little tender. Um, and I did take your advice and I did back off on the groceries and everything for this week. I don't, Next I, week, you're going back to them. <laughs> well, Amy's back in town. so And I'll get to that here in one sec. But... Um, you know, it, it's uh, and she came back in town. She went down there. And she said, "Yeah, they're they're tender, not as tender as they were." Right. Um, and maybe it was the like you were talking about the soft ground now getting into hard they, ground. They got soft because mm -hmm. they were just standing in. We got what did we get nine inches of rain in two days, ten so, inches, twelve inches yeah. in two days, and then all now all and the but raining before and raining after. Now all the the ground out there is hard as concrete. Right. So what have you been doing? You said you were going, you were working the other day, and you came across something. What did I come across? I don't know. You were, you started the conversation with oh, that. I, I get lost. No, Saturday <laughs> Saturday I went to to another uh, vet farrier conference. There was a fistful of farriers there, primarily veterinarians, that uh, well, Dr. Richard Mansman was involved in putting on, and uh, got up with Raul Bross a little bit. I've known Raul for some time, and and. Uh, he was one of the presenters and Curtis Burns was up from Florida and he was presenting and uh ran into to Dana Hall, who was one of the farriers that I've known and then So you had like this a, this celebrity we reunion. Had a big, big reunion, yeah, big reunion. We had a remember remember um Easy on the table, Mike. We're still paying for it. Megan <laughs> that was on the show. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Was, she was there. Um there's several other vets that I know from a number of places playing catch up with old friends a week, you know. So did you guys have lunch and everything? Well, they had lunch at you provided at the at the conference. Okay, well, very good. So what'd you take away from the conference other than uh, lunch? Lunch, <laughs> lunch, mostly it. lunch. No, you had to come away with something. I mean, I got a free pen. Okay, but I mean, like educational wise, you didn't just go there to, to shake hands and eat food. I mean, you there it was there for a reason. What was the uh, mostly food? They had good food. <laughs> um, 
No, we were uh, the topic. A lot of the topic was built around dealing with the modern re- arena surfaces, which totally changed the game on shoe and sport horses. And uh, so that things are a lot different. And we got to think about some things different than what we used to. And it's continuing to change. So they change surfaces. Every surface reacts different. So speaking of, of arena surfaces and stuff, I told you that my wife had to go down to Clemson University or something. There was a big show. I forget. Made in the Shade show was out there. Right. And this, I, know, I know the facility, yes. So this is her first actual permanent record training show that she's like the the scores are going to follow the horse and scores are going to follow her for the rest of her career as far as being you know a horseback next hundred years they'll be there they'll be there so she calls me up it's a three-day event the first thing they do is like at one o'clock she does the actual performance the the ride the test i guess and then there's what they call a a line test where like brett the her trainer basically walks the horse around so there's one where she's physically riding it and there's one where the trainer actually is showing it almost like um like the ukanuba dog show all right now take the dog around there take the dog around there you ever seen like the dog show and they- oh this is not a three-day event as in three-day eventing no 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 not three-day eventing I, I, if, right. I, if i said that i'm sorry i misspoke i say something that sometimes clicks in other people's minds right so she she did her training and then the later on that afternoon they do the lead line thing where Brett takes him around and shows the gate and makes the horse stand with one foot in front of the other foot, and they look at it. And then day two, they do so the, like confirmation for performance. I think so. They weren't, I, they weren't leading Brett around on the lead line. No, no, no. They had a hard time holding him down. So the first day, I said, how'd it go? She's like, she, she got first place in both. Nice. She, she got first place. I'm like, great. That's awesome. And, you know, she's worked so hard for it. Second day, she calls me again. She's like, you're not going to believe it. I got first place again and highest highest points or highest score or whatever in in the whatever that I see as you can tell I don't it's know probably all because of your failure all well all three days <laughs> Mike she won first place highest score she got an over 80 percent on something 70 five nine percent on something she's got all these ribbons all these awards she got like best in show for lack of a better term she's got the big huge pillow it's got a a horse bite or a bit on it uh she got all she came back she won everything she got Mm -hmm. the egot she got the emmy she got the grammy she got the oscar and she got the tony on all that stuff now actually the way that really works is all because of the trainer if it goes bad, it's the farrier. Right. That farrier. That farrier ruined us. It was horrible. That's right. It was horrible. So I just wanted to say everything. It all flows downhill, farriers on the bottom, right? Right, exactly. And I just wanted to say, you know, when you, we first bought uh, uh, Diego, you said he was low in the back end, or he's kind of high. What did you say? He was low in the back end? He was sitting a little low in the pastures, but with, with building strength and doing, uh, doing some work from my end of it, he's, he's in a much better place than he was. But... He's in a much better place now because he's he's taken all the gold, he's taken right. all the ribbons, all the medals. For well, the, he's, he's turned into he's turned into a powerhouse. So I just want to say thank you for now. My wife has got she's she's heading to regionals now. So I want to thank you and slap you at the same time that now she's, gonna, she's now gonna, she's, now she's going to spend all your money. <laughs> and I I told her I said don't come home until you start winning money. She's like oh it'll be a long time before I start doing that. I said well at least get someone to pay for the damn food. She's got somebody, you. <laughs> well, I mean, outside of me. I mean, actually get like a, a sponsorship like Purina or something like that. Well, that- just go down and beat on Eric's door, see if he can line something up All for right. you. Well, so that's what happened. She's ecstatic. She's over the moon. And she's like on the way home. I guess it's like a three-hour ride. She was like, I was so exhausted. I said, yeah, well, your adrenaline's gone. You're you're out of the, the, the climate now, and now you're home. And you're like, oh, I got to come back to you. <laughs> no, mm. she didn't say that. She, she, she missed me. She was thinking it. Yeah, she missed me, and I missed her. But I, I'm glad that she went out there. And she not only did she achieve her goal or go and you know break her nerves and stuff and achieve her goal of getting back into competition, but actually doing as well as she did. Right. So I, I just wanted to say, you know, congratulations to her as well. All right, guys, we got a big show to get into, lots to talk about. And don't forget for every podcast we do, we also have a YouTube channel. You can see this video in real time as we're talking about it here. Mike's got a whole bunch of uh, visuals uh, sitting on his desk over there. And if you want to see these in real time as we're talking about them, go over to YouTube. Give him a subscribe over there as well, and you can see these as we're talking about them here. We're going to switch the camera over. He's got half a horse's leg over here and a couple uh, uh, knee bones connected to the hip bone type stuff over there, and he's going to do his little Picasso drawing. So uh, lots to talk about, lots to get into, exciting shows, so stick around. Picasso got paid for his. (laughs) Stick around. You'll listen to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. 
Greetings, this is Julia Fisher, Secretary of the South Carolina Horse Council, reaching out to urge you to join your South Carolina State Horse Council. The South Carolina Horse Council is the only statewide, all-volunteer, 501c3 organization that works for the benefit of the equine industry in South Carolina. Our mission is to connect, communicate, and educate. The South Carolina Horse Council represents all breeds, riding styles, and activity preferences. The council works to serve the horse community in a myriad of ways. For example, we help to educate our members, our elected officials, and the general public about the benefits of equestrian activities. South Carolina Horse Council holds clinics throughout the state on topics such as horsemanship, pasture management, equine nutrition, lameness, trailer safety, and barn management. Are you a member yet? Visit schorsecouncil.com. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. If you have a question for Mike Stein, the way you get a hold of him is go to equinedynamics.com. At the top of the page says contact us. Uh, fill out that little form. Make sure you put a physical return address. Uh, and if you do, and uh, we'll answer your question on the air or e physically email you back. And uh, if we answer your question on the air, we will send you out a, uh, a little prize pack and stuff. My, uh, my new koozies are coming in. The Mike Stein All right. Equine Dynamics koozies are coming in here shortly, so we're still waiting for the printers to get uh, processed along, mail them out to me, and then we can mail them out to you. And over my far hand side, my very own koozie is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you? I'm doing all right. So talking terminology, uh, for those of you who don't know and you're new to the show, uh, welcome, by the way. Welcome. And, and uh, talking terminology is basically, if you hear any kind of like uh, terminology in the barn that your vet uses, your trainer uses, even some of your friends that are horse people, they use a certain term you're like going well i understand what the word means in context but i don't know exactly what they're referring to we kind of break up those uh mysteries behind those words and kind of define them here in a, a more professional manner for a loosely used <laughs> professional manner this mm. this week we're going to talk about I, I messed it up in the beginning but it's actually called the coronary extensor process zone am i saying that right mike the ce from the coronary band down to the extensor process so it's, yes. it's called the ce the ce mm -hmm. for the most part they don't call for, this for they don't continue call, and ed credits okay oh okay that's the, that yeah you know, with the affairs association we do continue and ed credits and this uh, podcast and qualifies for that continue ed credits right and there you go all right so what are we looking at here let me switch to when we go into camera nine are we looking at stuff here mike do you need sure. a camera yeah, yeah yeah all right so if you're looking at this on the youtube video we're looking at the cano uh, can canary. Canary. <laughs> looking at the canary. The canor. Can oh, All right. We had talked about last week of the tendon surface angle, and uh, and and I stumbled through that roughly. Yeah. And uh, but this is not a full coffin bone. Understand that you don't have the wings and everything there. But if you're looking at, here's your tendon surface where it is on on the uh, navicular bone, mm -hmm. and the angle between that and the bottom of your coffin bone, I believe, is how they do that i may be corrected for being a little off okay but i'm a little off a lot of times right sometimes and the ce is from the coronary band down to the extensor process now on a young horse that can be level i mean on this this was a young horse and you see right there there's your coronary band there's the top of your extensor process boom it's just about a straight line across as horses age that can settle down some horse with laminitis that can settle down and where that becomes a very important measurement is if you've got a horse in laminitis and just for say per se we we take a measure you know, x-rays we've looked at soul depth a few weeks later we shoot x-rays we look at soul depth we're running out of soul depth we hadn't necessarily got any rotation so then they go oh my god it's sinking because of soul depth well the true the true measurement of sinking is up here so is it, so if this was 20 millimeters, if you come back and shoot this and you've run out of your soul depth, your soul de depth is very shallow, and this is still 20 millimeters, did it sink? Or are you just losing soul depth because it's eroding away and it's not, not growing and it's coming out? And I've had them do that too. Now, on the other end, if this measurement drops down to 4 or 5 millimeters and it was 10, and this goes down to from 20 to... 28 well then you've then it's actually physically sinking so that there there's a there's more determination than just the just the depth here what would cause the the sinking of both heavy weight the heavy weight talk about laminitic horses when they sink and, and as horses age that that number can get greater 
And it can be you know, what they were talking about on one of the definitions, anywhere from zero to 30, you know, 30 mils. Some people will call it 20 mils. After 20 mils, start looking at what's going on. And uh, everybody's got, everybody has a little different school of thought on everything we do because this horses now does it matter what what the horse's job is like it doesn't matter if it's going from dressage to three-day eventing to hunter jumper or to just regular trail riding as far as what you're looking for in that number i think that the you know the breed of horse probably has more to do with that number than than the job okay you know you got you got a arab pony versus uh well the behemoth that your wife bought <laughs> diego diego uh -huh. yes and also if you got a horse that's an upright versus a low slung foot there could be some variations and averages with that also but you, you take a big draft horse opposed to um a pony those there's there's going to be some different relationships there as far as what what are what are, what are acceptable numbers. The CE is only significant when used as a comparison for the same foot. For example, laminitis in a CE may re increase rapidly if the P3 displaces uh, sinker like it sinks in slowly to the foot, undergoes a mechanical collapse. Right. I'm just reading off the paper. Yes. I don't and, know that. I'm just and reading. the CE can be very can be different from left to right. Just as all horses' feet, none of them match as close as what we'd like to think. Now, once it starts sinking, is it something that you need to? Is this recoverable, or is this this career ending? Depends on how far it goes. Right. You know, uh, I've worked on horses that have had some sinking that we've done rather well with. I've had horses that we never stopped the sinking that we've got a major problem. And how would you do? How would you slow down the sinking process? What can someone do as an owner? Uh, and what what the, do you do as a farrier to, to well the eliminate? best the best thing you can do as an owner is monitor your horses keep them at a healthy weight and a little bit of exercise goes a long way um, as a farrier that's one of those things could get into a huge amount of controversy because so I had someone that approached me they were all upset about the the ending of a founder horse that did did not go well and they wanted me to get involved because of whatever and tell them the way the horse should have been should have been shooed i know the the parameters i work within with the training i've had there's 500 ways plus to shoe foundered horses sometimes i don't care what you do it's not going to work sometimes it will work everything works different in different hands so they will said i want you to tell me the exact way to shoe that foundered horse i was not working on their foundered horse so there's a lot of variations in there and everything works a little different in different hands now so when that's you, where i'm going to go with that one <laughs> now when when you when you approach when someone that was a non-answer was it? yes it was <laughs> mike stein president uh for the uh, if uh, ifpa or whatever abc yeah, the, yeah. I, iapf or whatever <laughs> but uh so when you're when you're shooing a horse and someone comes up and tells you this when you're shooing a horse let's say that's in a competition for example diego diego you you're you are you shooing the horse 40 percent for his job and 60 for 60 percent him you know to to fix whatever he's got going on not that he's got a whole lot going on or is it i'm going to do exactly what the the owner wants me to do i'm going to shoe the horse based on the job that it's doing and not worry about the the soundness of the horse i hate to say that because that sounds like you're you're doing something bad but i mean how do, how do you approach that how do you balance that level between the, well, the there, job that's doing and the, what you know what there's always the a balance and you know i do consult talk with trainers i need to know what's going on uh i need information whether it be from the horse or whatever and yeah, I've got a pretty heavy therapeutic background, so I'm always thinking in those realms a bit. Now, the the trick is blending that in with what will work for that job. So you got to, and and that's going to be a little different with every horse. Now, Diego, because of the low pasterns, and because he's a younger horse, we did do some things to help with the mechanics of the hind end. And his pasterns are up in a good position. And at this point, he's really building hind end because the hind end is working. It was not working so good before. 
Now, some of that comes from therapeutic background. Okay. We needed him in a better place. Now, Diego's young. Diego has a healthy, strong front foot. And right now he's barefoot on the front end. Now there is a high low, a high, a high low issue to deal with. Are we managing that? Okay. Like we are apparently. So with the way he's working, triple crown, four, four, five right. ribbons and, and all classes. And, and like I said, took home everything. Right. And, um, so the reason that we did address the back end was because he set as low as he did in the pastures. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick little break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about a case study of a horse named Bo about an arthritic hot case. And now, if you're not watching us on YouTube, now's a great chance to go over there. Sign up. Oh, I say sign up. Just give us a subscribe over there, and you can watch these videos in real time. And also, um, you can follow us over on Facebook as well. So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign. He'll be right back. Greetings again from the South Carolina Horse Council. Our horse welfare programs offer small grants to equine owners who are struggling financially for specific veterinary bills. First, our Stallions to Geldings funding acknowledges the benefits of gelding your animal, and once the application is attested to by the vet and approved, it provides direct payments to your vet for gelding services. This is an important resource and has been able to assure that hundreds of equines in the state, horses, donkeys, and mules, have received quality care. Our euthanasia program helps with final arrangements for those owners who may be struggling with end of life arrangements for their equine partners and lack adequate resources. Funds do not cover disposal, but once again, once approved, can provide direct to the vet payments for managing euthanasia expenses. Are you a member yet? Visit schorsecouncil.com. Yes. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. Like I said, uh, join us over on Facebook. And the way you do that is to search Equine Dynamics Mike Stein over on Facebook. Give him a like and subscribe and share him over there. And uh, he posts a whole bunch of educational videos, educational articles and stuff. So if you want to further your education about equine or anything that has to deal with equines as well, uh, and without getting into you know going to the library and doing all that stuff, well, it's all one stop shop place. Go over to Facebook, like and subscribe to him over on Equine Dynamics Mike Stein on Facebook. And over to my far hand side is... Mike Stein, how are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you doing? Doing good. Now, we've got a case study here. Now, if you're not watching this on YouTube, now's a great chance to go over there right now uh, because I'm going to switch the camera. Wait, let me figure out. What what are we looking at first? We're going to do Bose Hawks first. Is that what we're looking at? Sure. Okay, so we're going to look at Bose Hawks. Let me pull up the video here, and I'm going to switch to camera six here so we can see this, and we can all be friends. So what are we looking at here, Mike? This looks like the back two legs of a horse. Yeah, you know Bo's a mare. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, okay, I know. I just... Bo, what about Bo Derek? So True. this is this is Bo. This is Bo. So what are we looking at at Bo's uh, hocks here? Bo has some arthritic hocks. Bo had a bit of a rough life. And... Uh, and Bo is fairly reasonably happy. And Bo's got not the prettiest feet at the moment. Oh, yeah. They're all chipped up and they're cracked right, right. here. Yeah, I can right. see that right here. But, uh, you know, this she gets along as best she can. I mean, it, 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 she's got some real damage there. Is she working or is she she's relaxing? She is relaxing. Okay. She is doing her job being a beautiful, beautiful lawn ornament. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the thing of it is, is, I don't know what the history on this horse is completely. Um, she had come out of a, a, a not great situation. And uh, I don't know if they just rode the Pachises out of her. May have not done farrier work at all. May have not worked with a farrier at all. Uh, may have had some balance and alignment problems on the ground that torqued against the Hawks. Um, may not have done... You know, the maintenance when maintenance should have been done and it might have just been you know just you know throw up throw the saddle on ride the bejesus out of her and throw it out in the field right i think i think there's a the a slogan saying until the wheels fall off or something like basically that. run the wheels off of it, throw it on the field when it starts getting a little better jump back on run run the wheels off of right. it. i think that's from what i understand through through the what i've heard through the chain of events that's kind of what went on so what are we looking at here and uh, but these hocks are a little deformed. They're they're not. They're kind of thick and knotted up. In person, you would see a lot more of the changes. If you see that 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 hock's kind of big and big and deformed, right? See, I would look at it and, and think, wow, that horse really worked out that leg muscle and not the other leg muscle. Right. Well, yes, there <laughs> there's definitely some dis difference in the muscle, but look at the width of that hock in comparison. Yeah. And uh, you know the maintenance 
probably was not near where it should have been. And, uh, you know, at this point, is a case of keeping this, this old girl happy. Now, when you're looking at her walk or, or move or anything, did, is there anything that sticks out that the Hawks would be interfering with? I know we got a small little video here. Do you want me to play the video we do. first? We do. All right, I'll play the video first. So what are we looking at here? Okay, look at that that rotation out to the leg. The leg has... Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. You know what that looks like? It looks like she's bow-legged. Right. And when you're looking at horses, <laughs> if, if they... I <laughs> get it, bow. Bow-legged, never bow, mind. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, horses' hind legs are a little bit of a spiral. And the harder the spiral, the the more rotation you get. Oh, poor. But if you're getting a lot of hock rotation, you also got to look at balance problems within the feet because you need to prep the foot for that leg. Now, at this point, there's not a lot we can do with it because those old joints have kind of – here's here's your hock joint. Nope, let me switch to camera nine. He's got a, a hock joint here, so we can see this in real time. And this may have been lined up a little better, but with time, we're blurry. Bring it up. Is that better? Yeah, and bring it down slowly. Okay. There you go. Now it focused. It did. There you go. But with the erosion of the joint, this has become here with time. And more and more bow-legged. And oh, these old guys like this, it, it, in five years from now, that may have eroded away more. There's, there's def definitely some joint destruction. Now, paying attention to... Your horse, if you're getting a lot of lateral, you know, lateral roll in the hocks, when I'm looking at a performance horse that starts off, that is a definite performance issue. And I've got to work with that when I'm doing my job and get that settled down. For a horse to power forward, you, you know, the more lateral movement you got in the, ha the, the hock, the less, the less forward thrust you get and the less, up, the less amount of push up you've got, so it's harder for them to lift. And also that torquing against the hawk is wearing the hawk out. When it gets to this point, uh, we're just kind of trying to keep this girl as happy as we can. And uh, but that hind end does not work right now. She is, she will still gallop across the pasture. It is a little odd looking, <laughs> but but she does. And it will become a point where you know you got to make may have to make some decisions because of this. But if they can keep her happy enough and living a decent enough life, well, that's what you do, right? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, does, is she doing all right? I mean, if you put the correct shoes on her and get her happy and make sure that, you know, she's comfortable walking and stuff, she technically, she could she could live on for numerous years with her legs being like that. Right. Well, okay. part of the problem with this horse is she's a, she's a bit on the feral side because of what was done to her. She didn't particularly like people oh, messing okay. with her. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And part of it, too, is to pick those hind legs up for any amount of time is pretty uncomfortable. So then you got to weigh out, are we really helping her? What are we putting her through to helping her? Is, and is it, is it worth doing that to her? And, of course, you know, money always comes into play. You know, how much do you... How much do you want to put into it? Yeah. And the problem with her is if you push that too much, she goes into a bit of a panic. So with that... There's only so much you can get done. Yeah. So you're at the the mercy of the the attitude of the horse as far as what how long and what it'll let it right let you do to it in and, a certain time. And like I said, she came out of not a great situation. So can we? I think she's like 28 years old. So oh, wow. Can, can we can we undo that? Probably not that easy. And l at least let her let her have the best life she can have. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, we have another case study of a suspensory issue and a case study of a horse named Luke. No relationship, just happens to be that way. So stick the, around. The Duke, Bo and Luke, the Duke, whatever. So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. Here at the South Carolina Horse Council, our membership dues are affordably priced for individuals, families, farms, and businesses. <laughs> Lifetime membership options mean you'll never have to worry about missing that annual renewal deadline to remain in good standing. Up. Membership in the South Carolina Horse Council offers a number of important benefits. The council offers $1 million worth of personal excess liability insurance at an affordable group rate to all of our members, whether you're a resident of the state of South Carolina or not. We have 
a compiled nothing trails booklet with all public Elixus trails listed and mapped within the state available to new members for free or upon request for the cost of the postage. Our website provides updates for emergency preparedness on evacuation sites Ready? or equines Quiet. in the event of hurricanes, floods, or other natural disasters. Visit SCHorseCouncil.com. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. If you'd like Mike Stein to perform a clinic out at your location, or if you'd like that po this podcast to be at any of your live events, you got a birthday coming up, you got a, a tent, special tent sale out at your location. If you got a bunch of people with a bunch of barns and a bunch of horses, and you'd like us to perform this uh, podcast right at your location as well, you can do that by going over to equinedynamics.com. At the top of the page says, con or actually says clinics. Fill out that little form, tell us what you want to do, and uh, we'll pencil you in and get you set up, and we can do this right at your very own location come out there and shake your babies and kiss your hands or something like that something like that right yeah sure <laughs> and over my far hand side is mike stein how are you i'm doing good travis how are you doing all right so we have another case study of a horse named luke now luke is a little bit more uh, advanced than Bo was i think Bo's pretty advanced yeah so if you're gonna watch this if we got a, a video over here on YouTube as well, so make sure you check this out over on YouTube. And let's go over to camera. Where are we going? Camera six on this one. Whoops, didn't mean to show you that, but all mm. right. Here we go. So this is Luke. And, this is Luke. And tell me the we'll story. Call the, we'll call this horse Luke. So this this horse, it looks like it's well, already in a show. It is in a show. And can you see the background? I can see the background. What's it say back there? Let's see. It says. It says. What is that? I think it's right. Here. Is that on your shirt too? The F. EI World Equestrian Games. Yep, I see that. Yes, 2018. So this is a horse. Excuse me, from the 2018 World Equestrian World Games. Equestrian Games. Okay, the discussion was dealing with suspensory damage mm -hmm. and suspensory flares up, flare ups. Now, when we're saying suspensory and micro tears and more suspensory, right? When, I guess, and we're, we're saying suspensory. Are we talking like, like the physical? What do we mean by we talk about suspensory? suspensory ligaments in the horse? Okay. They suspend the horse. Okay. Okay. I'm going with they it. Hold, hold them up. That's that's why we do this. They hold the pasterns <laughs> up. Okay. Okay. They're, they're, you know, if we're paying attention to horses, uh, one of the discussions was, you know, horses that warm up slow and they warm out of it. A lot of times with suspensories early on, they'll be, they might be a little sluggish. And it's like the vet said, have you ever heard the term a diesel, the horse is a diesel, warms up slow, but once he gets going, he's strong, right? Yes. I hear that all the time. You're like, you're that way, right? I I feel that way all Travis the time. Travis is a diesel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, he smokes, he belches, he, you know, makes weird noises. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the old stutters. Like my old, my old truck with half a million miles on it in the morning, right? Right. Exactly. I can hear you coming a mile away. Mm -hmm. But anyway... You know, some of those horses are feeling a few things, and we're much better at finding, you know, our equipment's gotten better, ultrasounds have gotten better. You can find micro tears, and sometimes they need some rest. Sometimes they need some therapy. They were talking about using shockwave you know, as far as one of the deals. And, uh, you know, rest time, shoeing is a biggie with that. And uh, I'm not saying that there was any, any problem with, with Diego, but that's part of why we went to the back end with shoeing because of where he set the pasterns because we wanted to protect against damage to the suspensory because he sat as low as he did. I don't, you know, I don't think we ever came up with anything where he had any damage at that point, but boy, he sat where it was looking in that direction. If you think, hmm, that, you know, it looks like a duck, right? So you treat it like a duck. Sure. Like your neighbor's ducks that hang out in your yard, right? Duck, duck, goose. That's right. You got the goose too. And, uh, Looking at, you know, multiple ways of working with the hawks, the, some of these um, regenerative deals are being used. And, uh, of course, there's, you know, there's pulse magnetic. There's your uh, ultrasound, you know, therapeutic ultrasound. There's, you know, TENS. There's a lot of different things that can be used now to help speed up the healing process. And truthfully, if people would do this on a tendon after your inflammation's down, after you've gotten gotten through all that part, when you're starting into the healing process and rehab process, I know that Ray would do this a lot, my buddy from New Zealand. I don't see anybody doing this, but you can work and massage those 
those things. And you can go out there as, every day and do it. I think and, my I think and, my wife pays someone to come over to it. Right, but you can learn to do it, and and I've done it on horses because of my work with, you know, with Ray, with uh, Chris King, with the different body workers I've been involved in. Right, and you can you can do some work yourself, with your hands, and you can do it daily, 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 and actually have some effect on it. But uh, it was interesting because this horse in particular, so the old horse has suspensory problems; they can't compete. There was plenty of them that have gone back to competition and this was the vet that out of florida who was presenting this was one of his clients had had a little bit of a suspensory flare-up that's well the horse could never go back to doing anything never can can compete and what what's the highest level the horse could show at well how's the how's the bronze at the world equestrian games now that is a picture from my camera on very- my phone as it's walking out the gate because i was i was i worked the gate for the grand the grand prix that year mm-hmm. at the weg I was one of the, one of the wig farriers, so it was kind of interesting. We'd sell that. And I said, "Wait a minute! I've seen that horse. I've taken a look at that horse. <laughs> I've, I've been you know, next to I've that been horse. I've been next to that horse, and there and there it is coming back out of the gate after showing. I got a few pictures here and there, some of the horses. And you said this horse right here got bronze at the got show. Got bronze at the show, and it had suspensory issues at one time. At one time, and it had a little bit had had a, a probably not, a, not probably not a major deer, but it had. A, had had some micro tears, had something, had a little bit of a flare up that showed up on their ultrasound, and they dealt with the situation early on. And I think that's sort of like with laminitis. Let's don't wait till the horse hits the ground. Let's deal with it early on, and these horses can have some great long careers, as this one apparently did and has. And this is Luke. We'll call this horse Luke today. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know the horse's name. And uh, this was this was the bronze horse in the 18 World Equestrian Games. Very good. So as far as being able to re- give these horses some help and get them back going, and it, saying they cannot, it's not an ending game. It's not necessarily it doesn't have to be an ending game, but you have to have you know good people involved, and you have to follow through and pay attention and pay attention. And then when you start bringing that horse back, you have to be pay attention and you have to be careful oh he's and, loving that bit look at that mm-hmm. he is foaming, foaming all over the mouth he's yep. ready to go he's ready now who's this right here who this is at? the gold winner okay so you you met the gold winner and the bronze winner well i, I was there for about the last 40 horses okay <laughs> so anyway this is isabella worth as she comes out out of the ring after her ride at the world equestrian games and she won gold that year so anyway i just thought i'd throw that in there for sure for whatever yeah and then we have a video this is a video of the one that won bronze right with, with, after being rehabbed with suspensory issues right yes yeah, it's, it's a grainy video is it's a high quality cell phone at its best right well at the time in 2018 i don't think the pixelation on the the video was there yet now you can make your own movies with your camera right so and you're pretty far away so i'm sure you know far away it was probably i'm pr- just outside of the end gate i know but i mean distance wise you know the cameras right. weren't made to do more than 200 feet in front of them so here let me play this video I know there's sound and stuff, but I don't want to get flagged just in case there's music. She's sit there, be bopping along, mm. coming around the corner, coming around the bend and turn three. We've got Luke Dog, <laughs> dog leg. She's winning the race. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's she's got getting it done. You know. Yeah. So I, I do. You know, it was kind of interesting that that popped up, and it's like, wow, I, I saw that horse. You know, Mike over here reminiscing. <laughs> So the the long and the short is that you know a horse has suspensory issues. You know, pay attention, get on top of it right away, massage it. Right. Um, can you do like ice and heat? Is there you know like a regular? There can be. It, it, it's one of those deals. You need to get your vet involved, mm-hmm. and hopefully you've got a good sports medicine vet who deals with the sort of things. Um, you know, when you've got when you've got inflammation, you deal with inflammation. Uh, I've you know people have iced plenty of legs and um, take care of the problem and be careful and methodical and you know on some level these high end performance horses you always need to have a little bit of a constant rehab thought in mind to keep them there it takes so much to build a horse to that level and it takes a special horse and rider team to go to that level 
And uh, so you got to take care of. Them. Now you said a statement, something about uh, you know sometimes they can get torn or ripped or, t- or you know there's a tear in them. And I think about like professional athletes, right? If they get a ripper or torn or something, they'll heat it, they'll ice it, they'll do something like sure. that. They'll, they'll stay off of it for a little bit. But then you also hear about stories about you know someone's going to be out because of surgery. Now horses, we technically traditionally don't do any surgery on them when it comes to these type injuries. Typically, no. Uh, there are some regeneratives they are injecting with that have really sped up some of the recovery. Stem cells? Stem cells have been used. I know that one of the regeneratives uh, that was talked about was Renovo. That uh, I've got a vet down in South Carolina that does a lot with that. And there are several others on the market now, and they're coming out all the time and getting better. And uh, we're getting, you know, we're getting better at, at dealing with them. And they are coming back better. As long as we're smart about it. And we're still learning every and day. we're not waiting to, waiting to see, well, let's just wait to see if it completely breaks. And then, <laughs> and then we'll, you know, and then oh, you're well. done. Yeah. And then you're done. <laughs> Throw $500,000 right out the door. All That's right, guys. Right. All right, guys. Stick around. When we come back, uh, what did we learn and wrap up the show? So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. Hello again from your South Carolina Horse Council. Did you know that the South Carolina Horse Council invests in programs that support education and equestrian activities for the young people of our state? The council awards numerous youth scholarships annually. We sponsor the state finals event for the South Carolina 4-H equine program. And we provide full event sponsorship for the year-end South Carolina Future Farmers of America horse evaluation program. We also sponsor the South Carolina Governor School of Agriculture equine program. Our expo periodically brings education and entertainment to equine enthusiasts of all disciplines. Is law enforcement in your area educated on the special needs of equines? The South Carolina Animal Control Officer Seminar helps familiarize law enforcement and animal control officers with proper care forces to better identify and investigate cases of neglect or abuse. For more information, visit schorsecouncil.com. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. Make sure you follow him over on Facebook. The way you do that is uh, search Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein over on Facebook. Like I said, he posts a whole bunch of interesting articles over there, a bunch of videos. He'll have a couple of these pictures up as well if you missed him here on the video portion of the show. And if you did miss the video portion of the show, by all means, you can go over to YouTube as well <clears throat> and uh, search Equine Dynamics. Give him a little subscribe over there. And anytime we post a new video, anytime new sh- a new show comes up, we're in the uh, second episode of season 10. We've got over nine seasons of episodes and stuff, of videos of past guests and everything. It's a great watch. Uh, they're m- no longer about 30, 45 minutes. <clears throat> if you want to watch them, you know, right before you go um, nappy poo or when you're on your lunch break, you can check those out over at YouTube as well. And if you have any questions for Mike Stein, go to equinedynamics.com at the top of the page. Uh, Fill out that little form that says contact us. Leave a physical address and we'll mail you out some uh, free stuff. And over to my far hand side, my very own stuff is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Travis? Doing all right. So what did we learn today? Talking terminology. Talking terminology. We looked at the CE from the cornea band to the extensor process. Look at it. Pay attention to that depth on your x-rays. So we're talking talking terminology. The coronary ex- extensor process zone is what the definition that yeah, we're going to. The CE zone. The CE Continuing zone. Continuing ed. Right? No, it's it's a coronary extens- right. extensory zone. And, uh, you know, if you've got a horse that's got a lot of hock rotation, talk to your farrier about it. Uh, I had a little bit of a deal f- some years ago where I looked at a la- lady's horse, and she said, my horse has loose hocks. Nothing nothing can be done about it. And uh, so I redid the horse, and the horse trotted out, and we lost the, ro- the, the hock rotation settled down. And she's like, it doesn't have loose hocks now. How did you fix that? That can't be, that can't, nothing can be done with that. Super glue. Uh, I had a hock tightening wrench <laughs> and uh, tighten them up, right? Yeah. Um, and then also we, we, we're talking about suspensory damage with these things. The earlier you take a look and minimize the damage and take care of it, these, this does not necessarily have to be a career ending thing. Too many times. You wait till everything is collapsing, and then, oh, it's time to do something about it. And, well, we're way behind the eight ball, and it's a little late. Back back to talking about uh, Bo with the, the arthritic hocks. And you say that, you know, when a horse is being born, certain parts of the bones mature at certain different levels. Right. And they probably, maybe, I'm just guesstimating that they probably didn't 
see those bones before they started getting solidified, before they becoming mature bones, and they probably left it like that. And then as the horse matured, they just stayed like that for the, over the, the life of the horse. That is, that is a possibility. I doubt that horse was that bow-legged when it was young. Well, not probably not that bull. Like and uh, the other thing is, as far as what kind of farrier work was done, was it regular maintenance or was it just not done at all? And that can have a big effect on if you've got a hawk, a hawks that are rotating. Aren't you something today? My camera went out of focus. I'm trying to get it to focus. No, it's back. not. It's the camera's not out of focus. You are. <laughs> I'm out of focus. You can't right. see me. All right, guys. Like I said, make sure you follow Mike Stein. If you have a question for Mike Stein, go to equinedynamics.com. And at the top of the page, uh, you can fill out that little form. If you like this podcast, perform a clinic out at your location or a, a live event. If you've got an opening ceremony or just want us to um, come out there and meet you and stuff, we can do that as well. Go to Equine Dynamics at the top of the page. says clinics. Fill that out. We'll come out there and schedule you and put you on our rotation. On behalf of Mike Stein over there. Have a good day. Thank you. Have fun with your ponies. My name, the, my name's Travis Singh. See you next week. Hopefully I can fix the fuzziness here. You are fuzzy today. I'm a little fuzzy. Just close your eyes. I shaved this morning. I'm not fuzzy. Dream Now I'm better. Lucky. You are better. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. Good night, Dad. <laughs>